Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. Hope all is well. And we're going to bring you some more Legends of Boxing PC game. Lennox Lewis will take on Gene Tunney in the main event. 15 rounds for the vacant world title. Heavyweights. In the co-main event, Frank Bruno from England takes on Primo Canera of Italy 15 rounds heavyweights for the vacant European title these matchups coming from a capacity filled house at Wembley Stadium a hundred thousand strong here at Wembley in London England and possibly they squished in a few more people so again up first the vacant European heavyweight title, Frank Bruno and Primo Canera, 15 rounds. The winner could be in good shape to get a title shot. Then the main event. From England, London, England, Lennox Lewis. Taking on Gene Tunney of the United States of America, 15 rounds for the vacant world title. Let's preview... The European Championship fight, which will be coming up in moments. Frank Bruno from London, England. Overall record. 40 wins, 5 defeats, no draws, 38 by stoppage. In our Legends of Boxing universe, he is the number one ranked British heavyweight behind Lennox Lewis. Lewis holds the British title. He is 5-1 and one with a draw. He has stopped four opponents, and he has been knocked out once. Primo Canera from Sequals, Italy. Overall record, former heavyweight champion. Also, Frank Bruno is a former heavyweight champion. Primo's overall record, 88-14-0 with, with 78 stoppages. In our Legends of Boxing universe, he is 4-1, two KOs, uh, actually three TKOs, and one unanimous points victory. His one loss was a split decision to Jerry Cooney. He's hoping for a win here and a rematch with Cooney back in the States. Bruno's punching power is a 9. Canera's is a 7. Endurance will favor... The rugged Italian, he has 22 endurance points, while Bruno with 14. Bruno will have a slight edge in control factor. You can see the 8 where it says control P. They're both pressure fighters, and Canera is a 7. So Bruno will have a slight edge there, I believe. We'll find out. To ringside we go. And Dave Gardner has traveled across the pond, and he will be the referee in both these bouts. Both fighters are in the ring here at Wembley. Joining us, covering these bouts for the Cleveland Times, Cleve Baseball Fan 879, our good friend Tim. Check out that wonderful Card and Dice Stratomatic Baseball channel. Klee Baseball Fan 879. What's going to be bigger butt kicking one of these fights or the Memphis Gri Grizzlies over the Oklahoma City Thunder? We shall find out, Tim. Thank you for joining us. So Frank Bruno and Primo Canera are in the ring. Bruno will be in the red corner. Canera in the blue corner. Referee Gardner brings both pugilists to the center of the ring. He says this is for the vacant European title. Are there any questions from the Chiefs seconds? There are no questions from the Bruno camp, and there are no questions from the Canera camp. Touch gloves and come out fighting. Bruno and Canera touch gloves. Now they go back to their corners. They await the bell for round number one, scheduled for 15 for the vacant European championship. Here's the bell for round number one. Bruno with a slight edge in control factor. And Bruno takes control right away as he digs to the body. 
As Canera comes forward, Bruno meets him in the center of the ring. Good body shots by Frank Bruno. Canera comes back with a left hook to the head and a chopping right hand. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange at ring center for these two large heavyweights. They land equally. Now Canera using the jab. Two jabs. Right hand. Faints with the jab. Right uppercut. Right uppercut. Staggers Frank Bruno. That is the big punch by the large Italian is the right uppercut. Canera comes back with a right hook and then a left uppercut. Bruno trying to get away from the ropes now. Canera trying to press in. Bruno throws a jab and a right hand. And Canera has some swelling near the right eye. Good shots by Frank Bruno. He slides away from the ropes. Infighting by both. But it's Bruno who gets the much better of it. Canera was more mauling. And Bruno worked a combination to the body. And then up to the head of Primo Canera. Action ring center in tight. And Canera comes back with two hard shots to the body. Under 30 seconds to go, and Bruno bangs away at the bell. Right hand to the head, left uppercut, and then a right to the body of Primo Canera, but the large Italian was able to use his girthy arms to parry away some of those blows. Bruno loses four endurance points, so does Canera. Canera did hurt Bruno midway through that round. I give that round to the Italian Primo Canera. The ringside scorer is not impressed with the power that Canera showed. He gives it to Bruno. I'm in disagreement. Here we go for round number two, scheduled for 15. European Heavyweight Championship. The vacant belt is up for grabs. Round two, and Canera comes right out at Bruno. Now Bruno trying to work behind the jab. Canera feints his way in, and he goes with a left-right hook. Good job by Primo Canera, smacking Bruno in the skull. Canera throws, but he throws wild. Bruno is able to evade those blows. Canera continues to press forward. Canera throws hard, but he misses. Here's a counter by Bruno, a jab and a right hand. Now Bruno looking to work off that counter. Hooks to the body, chopping right hand to Primo's head. Canera moves in. And he is met by two stiff jabs from Frank Bruno. We have about a minute 30 to go here in round one. Bruno really using his jab. Well, now he's hooking off that jab. Jab to the face of the Italian, then a hard right to the side of Canera's body. Bruno continues to work that jab over time. Two jabs, now pause with it. Booyah with the right hand, and Canera goes down. Face first to the canvas. The count has reached three, four. Canera starts to rise. He'll take the mandatory eight count. Bruno really measured him well, and he nailed Canera with a tremendous thudding right hand. Bruno goes for the kill. Bruno punishing Canera. Canera goes back into the ropes. Bruno pounding away. Referee Gardner looking on. Bruno throws wildly. He lands one of those punches. And the bell sounds to save the large Italian Primo Canera. A huge round for Frank Bruno, who came with a booming right hand, and Timber went Primo Canera. That is a 10-8 round for Bruno. We gave round one to Canera, unlike the ringside score. But either way, Bruno is now up. Round three, they are working on that uh, cut and swelling near that right eye of Primo Canera. Canera seems okay. Canera does have a tendency to go down, but he is a survivor. Joining us at Wembley at ringside, Steeler fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Also along with Matt, Cleve baseball fan 879. Our good friend Tim. Here's round three, scheduled for 15, vacant European title. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, a big exchange. Ring center, both men got in punching distance and they banged away. Now Canera looking to get some mojo back as he goes with a left hook to the body and then a right to the head. Bruno looks to answer. Bruno misses those shots. Primo got his arms up, parried them away. 
Bruno continues to work behind the jab. Two jabs and a right hand looking to duplicate the punch that dropped Canera in round two. Both fighters faint but do not throw. We have about a minute 30 to go in round three. Canera throws a hook to the body and a chopping right hand that Bruno was able to roll with. Frank comes right back. Left hook, right hand. And Canera shoves Bruno away. He absorbed that power. Shot much better. Under a minute to go here in round number three. Canera looking to pound. Left hook, right uppercut. Right uppercut. And Bruno, Bruno stood up to it. Under 30 seconds ago, Canera letting his hands go. There's the left hook and another right uppercut. And Bruno just goes back to his seat in the corner. He absorbed both those thudding combinations in that final 45 seconds from Canera quite well. A good round for Canera. Bruno loses three endurance points. Canera two. I give that round to Canera. And so does the ringside scorer. So I have it even after three. As Canera has taken the rounds one and three on my card, Bruno took round two, 10-8. The ringside scorer has Bruno up by two. They continue to work on the swelling and the slight cut near the right eye of Primo Canera. Frank Bruno, some light end swell work. They're telling Frank, to land that right hand, use your jab, set up the right as Canera lumbers forward. Round five. Both fighters will fight from distance, ring center. It's Bruno who's first with his punches. He feints with the jab and there's a right hook and then a left hook. And Canera shoves Bruno away. Good clean shots, crisp shots by Frank Bruno. But Canera stood up to them. Canera looking to come back. Two jabs and a right hand. And Bruno, Bruno is puffing up badly near the right eye. That was two solid jabs by Primo Canera and then a good straight right. So Bruno is now lumped up. He's having trouble with his vision and there's a grazing uppercut. Canera led with the right hand, grazed Frank Bruno. Bruno blinking but throwing. Two jabs and a right hand back from Bruno. Trying to bust up Primo some more. Bruno again working behind the jab, now hooks to the body. We have about a minute 30 to go here in round number four. Canera, two jabs, no right hand though from the Italian. Canera continues to work, and he, he fainted the jab, and Bruno walked into an uppercut. It was a grazing uppercut, but a good scoring blow by Canera. Under 45 seconds, right cross, left hook. A lead right catches Canera, then a left hook to the body by Bruno. Bruno looking to rally here in the final 30 seconds. He missed with the jab and the right hand, and there's the bell. A good round for the Italian, Primo Canera. They quickly get Bruno to the stool, and they're going to work on that right eye as it's puffing up pretty good. End swell work in the Bruno corner, in the Canera corner. They've done a fairly good job on the slight cut and swelling to the side of his eye, his right eye. Ringside scorer gives that round to Canera. We now have Canera up by a point. Uh, the ringside scorer has Canera down by a point. We've given Canera's on my card, rounds 1, 3, and 4, Bruno takes round 2 with the knockdown, 10-8. Mark Jones has joined us at ringside. He says Bruno will get tired. He always does. Round 5 coming up. Bruno down to 2 endurance points. Canera still has 9. The bell for round 5 scheduled for 15. European title on the line. The vacant belt. Who shall grab it away? Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. As Bruno moves forward, Canera caught him. Bruno retaliated. Now here's Canera working behind the jab. He jabs to the head of Bruno, then a right hook to the body. Bruno presses in. Bruno gets in tight. Pity pats with hooks to the body, but then jars Canera with an uppercut to the head. Bruno continues to work on the inside. He scores, but Canera comes back with a double left and then a right. Left to the body, left to the head, and a chopping right hand. What a counter 
combination by Canera. Bruno coming right back. He misses. Canera looks to counter again. And this time it's a short right hand and a left to the body. Canera looking to take control with a minute and a half to go here. Two jabs. Two jabs. Snapping the head of Bruno. That swelling begins to puff up some more. Here's Bruno. Left hook to the body and up to the head of Canera. Good shots by Frank. Under a minute to go here in round five. Frank trying to build on that combination. Frank with a jab, but he doesn't throw the right behind it. Bruno again looking to land that right hand that dropped Canera. He jabs and then throws a hook to the body. It was a right hook to the body off the left jab. Close round in round five. Bruno is now sitting on his stool breathing quite heavily. And Bruno's power has dropped down to a 5. Canera still has 6 endurance points. This is where Canera can get Bruno. As their control factors are even Stevens at 10. The ringside scorer gave that round to Bruno. He has Bruno up by a point. I have Bruno down by a point. Round 6 scheduled for 15. Canera is going to press the tiring Bruno in the Bruno corner. They want him to work the jab and throw that straight right hand that dropped Canera. And Bruno paused with the jab, and there is a right hook! And Canera was stunned by that one. Bruno looking to follow up. Two jabs, but no right hand. No right hand. Both fighters wing punches and miss. Bruno looking good. Canera looks to fire back. Canera drives a short left hook. To the body of Frank Bruno, not the most nimble man on his toes. Chopping right hand, just grazed Bruno. Bruno gets some distance. Jab, and there's the right hook landing on Canera's John. Canera staggered by that one again. Canera backs up a bit. Bruno measuring with the jab. He misses the right hand after the jab, and he hooks to the body. Canera tries to regroup with a minute to go here in round six. Canera digs a left hook to the body and a right uppercut to Bruno's head. Bruno buckles. Bruno buckles. Canera presses forward. And Canera lands a right hand, a left hook, and a right uppercut. And Bruno is staggered on the ropes. The European titles within Primo Canera's grasp. And Primo lands, but they are not solid shots. Canera threw wildly. As Bruno was trapped on the ropes. But the bell sounds saving Frank Bruno. Big round for Primo Canera. Bruno breathing very heavily in his corner. Arms on the ropes. Now his trainer takes the arms off the ropes. They're trying to revitalize Frank the best they can in that corner. In the Canera corner. Through the Italian interpreter. They're telling Primo you have him. Rough him up on the inside. Use that uppercut. Ringside score. It gives that round to Canera. So do we. We have Canera up by two points now. Actually, by a point, excuse me. Where they have Bruno up by a point. Round seven coming up. The bell for round seven. Canera quickly takes control. And Canera... Again, he, he gets on the inside. Bruno not able to keep the large Italian outside. He digs a left to the body and a right uppercut that snaps Bruno's head. Both fighters jostle one another. They try to throw, but they don't. Canera again, ready to fire away. And again, he digs the left to the body, holds Bruno in place, and hits him with a good right uppercut. That is his big punch, the uppercut. Now they tie up. Canera muscles Bruno back a bit. Referee Dave Gardner breaks them. Canera continues to fire away. Jab and a right hand snapping the head of Frank Bruno. Bruno finally looks to throw a punch, but Canera parries the lead cross away. Now Canera working behind the jab, hooks to the body. And Bruno felt that one. Bruno really slowing down now. Canera looks to faint but doesn't fire. 30 seconds to go in round 7. An excellent round for Primo Canera. And there's a hook to the body and a chopping right hand to the head that grazed Canera at the bell by Frank Bruno, but it was definitely a primo Canera round in round seven. Bruno breathing 
extremely heavily in his corner. Canera has gone fatigued also. His power has dropped to a four now. Bruno's power is a five. Canera's control rises by one, so Frank Bruno has the edge once again. After seven rounds of boxing, the ringside scorer has it even. I have Canera up by two points. Round eight scheduled for 15. The vacant European title on the line, and it's Canera pressing forward against a very tired Frank Bruno. And Canera digs the body hard with a left right, and then a left right to the head. Good job by Primo. Bruno tries to come back. Two jabs, but there's not that right hand. They want him to throw that right hand. He hasn't. The right hand that dropped Canera. And here's Canera digging hard to the body. A lead straight right. And then a grazing hybrid left uppercut hook to the body of Frank Bruno. Canera continues to punch. Canera gets inside. Canera holds Bruno in place and rips a right uppercut. And Bruno, he absorbed that punch pretty well. He absorbed it pretty well, but you don't want to take too many of those punches. Again, both fighters jostle one another on the inside. Now shove one another away. Bruno trying to get distance with that jab. Bruno looking to jab, and he does, but again, there is no right hand. Maybe he's going to try to walk Canera into that right hand. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange. Under a minute to go here in round eight. And again, both fighters faint, but do not throw. 30 seconds to go, and it's Bruno who's going to fire at the bell. There's the right hand, and then the left hook to the body. Good job by Frank. That's a close round, but I give it to Primo Canera. Joining us at ringside, Jim L. How you doing? Mark Jones, Cleve Baseball Fan 879, and Steeler Fan 1933, our good friend Matt. So Bruno's going to have to try to get a second wind here. As Bruno's power drops to four. Both control factors are now 11, so it's going to be who rolls the higher die. Ringside scorer gives that round to Canera. He has Canera up 76-75. I have Canera up by three. I've only given Bruno two rounds, but of course he had the 10-8 round when he dropped the Italian in round two. Air Sox Arizona's joined us. Uh, Red Sox have been making some wheeling and dealing. Our good friend Sox Arizona. Check out that wonderful channel. Fine young man. Please subscribe to that. Michael Forbes. Hope all is well. Lots of illuminaries at ringside here at Wembley Stadium in London, England. Round 9 scheduled for 15. The European Championship at stake. And both fighters again. As Canera presses forward, Bruno moves away. They don't throw punches. And now there's a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Canera got in there. Bruno retaliated. Scoring blows, not big blows. Another toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. As Bruno backs up, Canera presses forward, and they throw and land. Now Bruno working off the jab. He hooks, jabs to the head, and he hooks a right to the body of Primo Canera. Bruno lands on the belt line, says referee Gardner. Bruno having a pretty decent round here and Canera goes low oh Canera went low with that that's definitely a Franks and Bean shot that will slow down Bruno even more Bruno is gonna punch though right left and then a left hook good job by Frank one minute to go Bruno incensed by that low blow continues to fire away a lead cross catches Canera and then a left hook to the Labanza of the Italian. Under 30 seconds to go. And Canera's finally going to throw. And he comes back with a right cross left hook to the head of Frank Bruno. So good thudding combinations at the end by both Bruno and Canera. But to me, it was a Bruno round. He did a lot more than Canera. We prepare for round number 10. Again, I gave that round to Cane uh, to Bruno, excuse me. Both fighters punching power down to four. Both control factors are 11 now. Round 10 coming up. They give that round the ringside score. Again, our scorecards are unofficial. He gave it to Canera, so it's a very close fight. 
He has Canera by two. I think I still have Canera by three. Round 10, scheduled for 15, vacant European title. Both fighters wing big shots, and they both threw right-hand haymakers, and they miss. The crowd here at Wembley, very tense. They're rooting for their favorite son, Frank Bruno. Bruno looking to work the jab, and he does, and there's the right hand that follows it, smacking Canera in the face with both those punches. And now, again, Bruno strides a bit low. It's on the belt line, referee Gardner says. Round 10 continues. Canera looks to retaliate. Right hand misses, no counter by Bruno. Canera continues to fire away as he bangs the body and up to the head. They were scoring blows, not a lot of zip on those punches by Primo. Primo continues to fire. A good combination, right hand, left hook to the jaw of Frank Bruno. One minute to go here in round 10. Canera's found a rhythm. Canera's found a rhythm. He steps forward. Bruno doesn't throw. Canera throws a left. And then grabs onto him. Here's the right uppercut. And Bruno goes down. Bruno goes down. Bruno is down. The count has reached four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is over. Primo Canera is the new European heavyweight champion. He has knocked out one of England's favorite sons, Frank Bruno, in round Ten. Tremendous right uppercut departed Bruno of his senses and faculties. Bruno still has not risen from the canvas. Primo Canera, the official time is 227. 227 of the tenth round, and Canera, who was an underdog, has now won the vacant European heavyweight title. He hopes to travel back to the United States of America and get a rematch with Jerry Cooney, who he lost a split decision to in his last bout. But the Italian is celebrating with his corner as they will be awarding the European heavyweight championship belt to Primo Canera, the giant from Sequels, Italy. As Mark Jones is Timber. It was a hell of a fight. A hell of a fight. Remember, Frank Bruno dropped Canera in the second. But Canera rallied back well. He was hurt on a couple other occasions. But really, Canera used his strength and power to wear down the Englishman Frank Bruno. And then, as we just witnessed, knock him out with that devastating right uppercut that took the heavyweight title away from Jack Sharkey in reality. So, Primo Canera and his team will be clamoring for a rematch with Jerry Cooney at Madison Square Garden. They want that rematch. Mark Jones... In the Canera corner says, we want the rematch with Cooney. Mark Jones has done a marvelous job with Primo Canera. So there you have it. Unbelievable. Let's go to the official scorecards. Again, Primo Canera's right uppercut was judge, jury, and executioner. Frank Bruno finally is up and on his stool. As the ringside physician, David Little, Dr. David Little, takes a look at it. So Canera was up on all three scorecards, 87-84, 86-84, and 87-83. Again, a lot of those rounds went to Canera as I fought. Unlike the ringside scorer, uh, Bruno had the round 10-8 and round 2 when he dropped Primo. Before we head to the main event, one more time, referee Dave Gardner reaches the 10 count at 227 of the 10th round, the winner and new European heavyweight champion, the giant from Sequals, Italy, Primo Canera, as he is very joyous with his corner. Mark Jones is in that corner. Cleve Baseball Fan 879 says, Canera, not as big of a butt kicking as Thunder Grizzlies, but Canera brought more thunder than the thunder did tonight. 
All right, so Primo Canera is the European champion. He takes the vacant belt by crushing Frank Bruno in the 10th. Up next for the vacant World Heavyweight Championship, Lennox Lewis, England, Gene Tunney, the Fighting Marine, United States of America. Lennox Lewis, overall record in reality. 44 wins, 2 defeats, 1 draw, 32 by stoppages. He's from West Ham, England. I think I said London, England earlier. I apologize. Gene Tunney, the Fighting Marine, 61-1, and 1, 45 knockouts, 19 no decisions or no contests, which were a frequent thing back in the day. Gene Tunney is making his initial debut in our Legends of Boxing universe. The computer has him as the number one ranked heavyweight. Lennox Lewis is 8-0. He is the British title holder and Commonwealth title holder. But now he goes for the biggest prize of all, the world title. Lewis 8-0, two stop, uh, seven stoppages, and one points victory. Gene Tunney again making his first appearance in Legends of Boxing in our universe. Tunney has 27 endurance points, Lewis 23. Lewis the much bigger puncher with 8 power factor. Tunney with a 3. Lewis should fare pretty well. It's even Stevens. Lewis is a tactician, and so is Tunney. And that's a 9 and a 9. You can see that right here. And then there's that other slight formula they do. So it's basically going to be the higher dice roll to see who will have control. Both fighters have made their way to the ring here at Wembley Stadium. Over a hundred thousand strong for this vacant world title. Lennox Lewis out of the red corner. Gene Tunney out of the blue corner. Referee Gardner brings them to ring center. There are no questions from the chief seconds. Referee Gardner again explains as he does in all bouts the rules and then says this, this punch here is good. Below this, it's low. He says touch gloves, come out fighting. Lewis and Tunney touch gloves. Lewis will have a tremendous size advantage here over Gene Tunney, the fighting Marine. Lewis out of the red corner. Tunney out of the blue corner. Here's the bell for round number one. Lewis will be on the outside. Tunney will try to dip in and out, land his punches, and get out. That's what he has to do. And it's Tunney right away with control. And Tunney lands a jab and a right cross and moves away. He wants to dart in and out side to side. Lewis pawing with the jab. While Lewis paws, Tunney continues to throw. He jabs his way in and lands an uppercut to the head of Lennox Lewis. Lewis looking to fire. Lewis throws a combination to the head, but Tunney was able to parry a bit of those of the blow away, turn with those punches, take out some of the power. Oh, a clash of heads. Neither fighter comes away any worse for wear. Tunney again. In and out. Good job. A good stick and move combination catching Lennox Lewis. Tunney very quick of foot and fist. Lewis looking to load up. Lewis misses. Big shots by Lennox Lewis. Tunney just moves away. No counter. Tunney looks to dip in now. Oh, a lunging hook catches Lewis on the jaw. And Tunney gets out of there quite quickly. He does not want to wait for return mail. Tunney faints, faints, but he doesn't throw. He's keeping Lewis off balance. Under 30 seconds to go. A huge round for Gene Tunney. There's a lead cross and a left hook. And there is the bell. Excellent round for Gene Tunney. He was quite elusive. Again, darting in and out, landing his punches and not being hit. But can he keep that up for 15 rounds? Lewis down to 20 endurance points. Tunney 25. I'm in agreement with the ringside score. We both give it to Gene Tunney, round one. In the Lewis corner, Emmanuel Stewart is telling Lennox, get close, get in your punching range, and then work that body. 
in the Tunny corner. They want him stick, move, land your punches, and move away. You can see Tunny on the background rolls of, I believe it would go 0 through 14. He's going to fight Elusive. Then 15 through 19 on the outside. He never fights on the inside. And only a 20 roll will he come forward to provide pressure. Lennox Lewis never fights Elusive. 0 through 13, he's on the outside. 14 and 16, he's on the inside. Uh, 17 through 20, he brings the pressure. Round 2, scheduled for 15, vacant world title at stake here. And it's Tunney in control again. And Tunney again, he leaps in with that left hook, clipping Lennox Lewis on the jaw. But he quickly moves away. Lewis looking to fire. Lewis hooks to the body but cannot land the right hand to the head. Lewis again fires away. He misses with those short shots. Tunney's able to move away. Tunney foot faints. Lewis out of position. And Tunney ratatats him with two hooks to the body and quickly gets away from Lennox Lewis. Tunney again throws the jab, but Lewis gets his hands up, parries those blows away. No counter by Lennox Lewis. Lewis looking to throw. Lewis bangs to the body and up to the head. Tunney stayed in a little too long. He tried to get his punches off, but it was Lennox Lewis firing away. One minute to go in round two. Lewis having a, a bit of a better round. And as I say that, Tunney snaps two jabs. Two jabs into the face of Lennox Lewis. No right hand, though. He decided to move away. Lewis looks to retaliate. Lewis misses with a big cross. No counter by Tunney. Under 30 seconds to go here in round two. Lewis loading up. And Lewis lands. Lewis lands a right cross. He fainted with a jab, and he landed a good right cross. But again, Tunney is able to maneuver his body to turn a bit to absorb, to take away some of that power of Lennox Lewis. Lewis loses two endurance points. He's down to 18. So does Tunney. He's down to 23. I thought Lewis did a bit better in that round. I give a close round to Lennox Lewis, and so does the ringside score. Round three coming up in the Lewis corner. They like the work much better from Lennox in round two. In the Tunney corner, they just want him to jab, jab, jab. And when you have an opportunity, throw something else. They do not want large combinations, meaning many punches. They want one, two, one, two, three, and get out. That's what they're telling Gene. Here's round three. And Lennox Lewis takes control. And Lennox Lewis, see, right there, Gene came in. He tried to throw. Lewis wrapped him up and held him in place and nailed him with a solid right uppercut. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, almost. But Tunney was already bailing out, and both fighters missed their shots. Lewis is able to cut the distance a bit on Tunney, and there's a right cross. He feints with the jab, moves Tunney right into that right hand, and he catches Gene. Both fighters faint, but don't throw. We have about a minute and a half to go here in round three. Tunney doubles up on the jab, but they, he was short with it. He's very leery of the power of Lennox Lewis. Now Tunney gets in punching range. Two jabs and a right hand. A possible cut. And Lewis is bleeding from the nose. Tunney draws first blood. And it's the blood of Lennox Lewis from the nose. Good job by Gene. One minute to go here in round three. Gene, emboldened by the blood, wings a vicious left hook. That Lennox is able to put his arms out and parry away once again. Now Lewis looks to throw. Lewis throws two jabs, but Tunney dips away from them. As we fight towards the bell, it's Lennox Lewis. Again, Lewis is throwing haymakers. Blood coming from his nose. Tunney has an opportunity. Dips back in to throw. And Tunney with a huge left uppercut and a right hand. And Lewis shrugs it off at the bell. But what a hellacious combination by Gene Tunney. A bloody nose. Lennox Lewis goes back to his stool, sits down on it, and they quickly work. On that nose, Tunney looks very, very good right now. I give that round to Gene Tunney. Lewis down to 16 endurance points. Tunney to 21. I have it two rounds, one. Tunney, they gave round three to Lennox Lewis. I disagree with that. So we've had some disagreements with the unofficial ringside score. 
Round four coming up. Here's the bell for round four. Referee Dave Gardner says fight. And that's just what Tunney will do. Two jabs and a right hand. Snapping the head of Lewis, and then he moves away. Slides one way, slides back the other way. Never staying in one spot too long. Lewis continues to jab from the outside to try to cut the distance. It is a jabbing contest, and there's the good jab and a right hand. Landing on Tunney. Scoring blows by Lewis. Lewis looks to throw again. Now he hooks hard to the body. He hooked very hard with that left hand to the body of Tunney. Tunney might just be slowing down just a bit. It's very difficult to fight the way that he's doing, and it's Lewis letting his hands go. Lewis wings the cross. Tunney is able to move away from it. No contact. Lewis continues to fire away with two jabs, but this time he could not walk Tunney into the right hand. Now Tunney looks to retaliate, and it's a left hook to the body and a right hook to the head. Tunney slides away. Tunney slides back in. Oh, a good left hook to the jaw of Lewis. No right hand to follow, though. Lewis measuring with the jab. Now lands a right hook to the side of Gene Tunney. Under 30 seconds to go here in round four. And it looks like Lewis is going to rally at the end. And Lewis nails Tunney with an uppercut. But again, Tunney was able to roll with that punch. That is a good round for Lennox Lewis. Both fighters lose two endurance points. Lewis, 14 now, endurance. Tunney, 19. I give that round to Lewis. They give that round to Tunney. So I have it 38-38, just like they do. Just a discrepancy in which rounds we have given to which pugilist. Round five coming up. Both fighters off their stool. Here's the bell. And it's Gene Tunney from distance. But he steps in, and he lands the right cross and a left hook to the body, then he moves away. Lewis steps forward, and he is tagged again with a right-left. Same combination. Tunney steps away, then comes back with a lead right, and then the left to the body. Two times, it has worked to perfection for Gene Tunney. Tunney faints. Lewis doesn't throw, neither does Gene. Now Tunney faints, and he fires! with a lead cross again and he digs a hard left to the rib cage of Lennox Lewis that combination has been money here in round five a minute and a half to go in round five Lewis lets his hands go two jabs but no right hand to follow Emmanuel Stewart wants to see Lewis land that right hand and there it is it is a thudding right hand he walked Tunney right into it and Tunney is hurt Tunney backs away. Lewis pursues. Lewis looks to land. He throws a right and a left, but Tunney dips, dives, and maneuvers out of danger. Tunney looks to fire back, and he does. A quick three-punch combination. All straight shots catching Lewis moving forward. They're back at distance, but it's Tunney who fires, and another left to the body and a chopping right hand by Gene Tunney. So Lewis had that moment in the sun when he hurt Tunney, but Tunney did not hang around to get tagged anymore, and he rallied in the final 35 seconds of round five. I give that round to Gene Tunney. Lewis did have that big moment, but it was not enough in my opinion. Lewis will be down to 11 endurance points. Tunney with 17 and they do give that round to Tunney. So we are in lockstep right now with the official, uh, I'm sorry, with the unofficial score at ringside. 48-47, we see it the same. The luminaries at ringside, Cleve Baseball Fan 879, our good friend Tim. Check out that wonderful card and dice Stratomatic Baseball channel. Mark Jones is here, Sox Arizona. Please check out and subscribe to that channel. Michael Forbes, Jim L, Steeler Fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Round six, scheduled for 15, vacant World Heavyweight Championship from Wembley at stake here. An excellent fight so far, and Lewis looking to pounce on Tunney, and he does. He bangs away with a left-right hook, trying to slow down the very elusive Tunney. Tunney trying to work behind that jab from the outside. Tunney lands on the belt line. Referee Gardner says it's okay, but a lot of boos rain down upon Tunney here at Wembley Stadium. I don't think there is anyone 
who is rooting for Gene Tunney other than his corner and his relatives who have traveled over across the pond. Here's Lennox Lewis. Lewis fires to the body again, staying away from the head, trying to slow down Tunney. That's what Emmanuel Stewart told him to do in his corner. Both fighters faint but don't throw. Lewis pressing the smaller Tunney. Tunney trying to stay on the outside, get in and out. And right there he did. Right hand, left hook, and moves away. Good job by Gene. Lewis looks to retaliate. Lead cross. He tried to walk Tunney into it. Tunney rolled with the punch. It was a scoring blow, though. Tunney comes back with a hook to the body. It is a left hook, a right hook. Then he sidesteps Lewis and continues to bounce away from Lewis. Lewis presses forward, and Tunney greets him with two jabs. Tunney slides the opposite way now. Lewis goes on the belt line and there is the bell that was a close round round six was very close lewis will drop to eight endurance points now tunney's still at 15. he only loses two endurance points the ringside scorer gave it even i'm in agreement with that so after six rounds of boxing here at wembley Myself and the unofficial ringside scorer, we both have it 58-57 for Tunney. But it's a very difficult way for Gene Tunney to fight. He's got to constantly move. Bip and bop. Do not stay for return mail. Round 7, scheduled for 15. There's the bell. Again, both fighters towards ring center, but it's always Tunney circling, circling. And Lewis tries to cut off the ring. Lewis does, and Lewis bangs away to the body. Trying to slow down Gene. It's a good two-handed combination to Tunney's body. Lewis again! This time referee Gardner says that's a bit low. But that will slow down Gene. Gene says he's fine. Lewis continues to fire away. Right cross. Left hook to the body. Tunney beginning to slow down. Lewis finding a rhythm. Lewis, oh, a good! He fainted the right and walked Tunney into a left hook to the head. Tunney really on his bicycle now. Now he stands his ground and he lands a three-punch salvo trying to get his pound of flesh back. Tunney continues to fire away. Lead left hook lands on Lewis. Under a minute to go here in round seven. Both fighters faint, jostle, tie up, and break. 30 seconds to go, and it's Tunney throwing punches at the bell, and he lands. He walked Lewis into a right cross and then a left hook to the body. That was a good competitive round for both of these fine pugilists. I think Tunney stole it at the end. I think Tunney stole that round at the end. Lewis down to five endurance points. Tunney still with 12. And again, I'm in agreement with the ringside scorer. He has Tunney 68-66. I have the same. Round eight coming up. There's the bell for round eight. And Tunney quickly in punching position. And he bangs away to the body and then up to the head. And slides back and forth. Lewis pursues, trying to work behind the jab. But it's Tunney who throws two jabs. Lewis, with his left hand, parries those punches away. Lewis tries to get Tunney in range. And he does. He throws two jabs, but Tunney knew the right hand was coming. And he stayed low, dipped to the left. Both fighters faint, but do not throw. Tunney has to get in that perfect position to throw against the larger, taller Lennox Lewis. And both fighters wing. Tunney threw. He stepped to his left, came back with a winging right hand. Lewis had the same idea. Both haymakers missed by both pugilists. Now Lewis measuring with that jab. The jab lands, and then a right to the rib cage of Gene Tunney. Lewis trying to slow down Tunney. Tunney moving and moving and moving. And again, the same combination. The jab and then the right to the rib cage of Gene Tunney. A minute to go here in round eight. It's a Lewis round so far. Both fighters faint, throw, and miss. Here's Tunney. Tunney works the jab beautifully. Sidesteps and comes back with a left uppercut and a right hand. And Lewis was staggered by that one right at the bell oh my lord what a nifty move almost a la jersey joe walcott where you step away and you come back he came back with a left and then a right 
and the larger Lewis buckled as both punches were radared right onto Lennox Lewis, sometimes fragile chin. And that will give the round to Tunney in my eyes. Lewis might go fatigued on that combination. Nope, he'll still have three endurance points. As we begin round nine, Tunney with ten. I, that's definitely a Tunney round. Tunney now building up a points lead as we come up on the halfway point of this scheduled 15-round bout for the vacant World Heavyweight Championship from Wembley Stadium. Over 100,000 have packed in. Almost one and all rooting for Lennox Lewis, the man from West Ham, England. Chief seconds are out of the corners. Here's round nine, the bell. They tie up as Lewis tries to rough up Tunney on the inside. Referee Dave Gardner breaks them. Lewis gets in punching range. Tunney's staying a little too much. He doesn't let his hands go, but Lewis does. And Lewis hooks to that body. The right hand missed, but the left hand didn't. The left hook belts the rib cage of Gene Tunney. And again, Lewis goes to the body, and it's on the belt line. Referee Gardner says it's good. Lewis continues to pursue. Tunney will not stand his ground. Lewis using the jab. Pause, pause. Booyah with the right hand. And Tunney buckles. Tunney buckles. Moment of truth for Lennox Lewis. Lewis looks to fire, and he throws too wide. And Tunney blocks the shots. Tunney looks to have recuperated from that big right hand, but Lewis looks to duplicate it. He can't. He threw the right hand he missed, but that left hook digs to the rib cage of Tunney. A good round for Lennox. Two jabs at Tunney. Tunney parries them away. Tunney is not throwing punches. Lewis is at the bell. It is Lennox Lewis throwing but missing. Tunney very economical in his punches, and he was rattled by that big combination from Lennox Lewis. Lewis will have one endurance point left. Tunney still has eight. Lewis took that round. That's Wow, they gave it to Tunney. I'm in disagreement. I give that round to Lewis. So we have it 85-87. Tunney by two. They have Tunney by four. Round 10, scheduled for 15. They've done a good job with the bloody nose. Every now and then a slight trickle of blood from the nose of Lewis as Tunney smacks him with the jab in the right hand. Here we go, round 10. Tunney looking to get his mojo back. He hooks to the body and moves away. He's, not, he's just throwing one punch now. And Tunney again, as I say that, he steps away, comes back with a right hand to the head and then a left to the body of Lennox Lewis. Tunney continues to throw. Tunney misses with those two jabs, but he's on his toes, moving away. Lewis trying to walk him down as Lewis walks him down. He is tagged with a left hook and a right hand, and Lewis is down! Lewis is down! The count has reached three. Lewis starts to rise. He will take the mandatory eight. Gene Tunney has just dropped Lennox Lewis, and he is the title is within his grasp. Referee Gardner reaches the mandatory eight count, wipes off the gloves of Lennox Lewis, asks him, are you okay? He says yes. Tunney going for the finish. Tunney banging away with hooks to the body and the head. Tunney continues to batter Lewis. Right hand and another left hook to the head. Lewis trapped on the ropes. Now Tunney slides away. Lewis steps towards him, and they both land. They both land. It was an even exchange. Tunney continues to punch, and Tunney hooks to the body and up to the head. Tunney's staying in there a little too long now, maybe. But Tunney feels he has Lewis, and there's a right hook and a left hook. It was a lead right hook, and then the left to the head, a huge round for Gene Tunney. Lewis, very much worse for his wear in his corner. Tunney still with six endurance points. Unbelievable. Gene Tunney, the fighting Marine, looking to take this world title back to the United States of America. That was a 10-8 round for Tunney. We have him comfortably ahead. They have him by six points. I have him by eight points with rounds 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 to come. 
in the tunny corner. They're telling Gene, box your way to victory. Again, at any moment, the thudding power of Lennox Lewis, which now has dropped to a five, but that's still significant, could land upon Gene Tunney. Here's the bell for round 11. And it's Tunney who quickly takes control with that jab. There's the two jabs in the right hand. Snapping the head of a tired Lennox Lewis. Lewis looking to wing. He throws hard punches, but Tunney slides away. Faints, but doesn't throw. Lewis again winds up. And he lands a good cross. A good cross, but as you can see, some of that zip is off his punching power. Lewis looking to fire again. He throws hard, and Tunney slides away. Tunney looking to set him up. There's a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Both fighters score. Lewis goes a bit low. Now they clash heads. Referee Gardner says fight. Tunney with a hook to the body, but no second or third punch. He slides away. He's looking to land that perfect combination. And it's Lewis who throws the right cross. It was a grazing cross. Missed with a wild left uppercut. Lewis, tired or not, I believe Lennox is winning round 11. Tunney will throw at the bell. And it's a good right hand and a left hook to the rib cage of Lennox Lewis. The right to the head, the left to the ribs. Lewis goes back, breathing heavily in his corner. Tunney still with four endurance points as we head to round 12. But I give that round to Lewis. They give it to Tunney. Again, our scorecards are unofficial. Round 12, scheduled for 15, and it's Tunney quickly moving towards Lewis as Lewis presses towards Tunney, and Tunney meets him with a good rat-a-tat four-punch combination and then moves away. Tunney goes uh, to the belt line. Good shot by Tunney. Tunney is firing away again, a good combination. Lead right, left hook to the body. He slides one way and then comes back with that right hand. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Tunney's scoring. Lewis needs to land something big. Lewis tries to hold Tunney in place. He does. Now he rips a right uppercut. And Tunney ties him up and they break. Tunney on his horse. Tunney, jab, right hand, snapping the head of Lewis. Lewis tired, lumbering forward. He is getting hit with many a shot now. A minute to go here in round 12. Lewis loading up. He bangs to the body but missed to the head. Tunney is always on the move. Tunney again! This time he walks the other way, lands a right hook to the body, and then a left to the head. Excellent job by Gene Tunney. 30 seconds to go in round 12, and the Fighting Marine will fight at the bell. Right, left, and the bell. Lead right, left, to the side of Lennox Lewis. That is a Gene Tunney round. We're coming up on the championship rounds now, 13, 14, and 15. And you know what they say about round 13. It is the hard luck round. We have Tunney very comfortably ahead on points. He dropped Lennox Lewis in the 10th. They have Gene up by 7. I'm pretty much in the same boat there. Here's round 13. Tunney. Three rounds away from the championship, it seems. And it's Tunney who quickly takes control with two jabs. He's not throwing the right. They're telling him, jab, 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 Gene. There's Lennox Lewis. Lewis winging punches. He misses. Tunney counters. And there it is. Left uppercut, right hand. And then Tunney moves away. Wild punches by Lennox Lewis leave him wide open to that counter. Tunney goes back to that jab. And then a left hook. He jabbed and went with that same left hook. To the body. Tunney continues to work off the jab. Beautiful combination as he catches Lewis moving forward, snapping his head. You can see the dreadlocks flying. Left, right, left. Three punches and get out. Now Lewis again booming punches by Lewis, but Tunney is very able to easily avoid those punches. Excellent defensive fighter. You see a four roll or lower. It's a defensive roll. And now Tunney looks to punch, and punch he does. Two jabs and moves away, side to side. He goes one way, then back the other way. Moves forward, moves back, never staying too long in one spot. Lewis presses, and Tunney hits him with a lead cross. And once again, moves away. 
A minute to go here. It's all Gene Tunney. Beautiful combination. Hard shots. Tunney windmills. And Lewis is down for a second time. Will he beat the count? And he is up at three. The second time Lennox Lewis has gone down. Tunney leaped in with a windmilling combination. And he continued to punch until Lennox Lewis crumbled to the canvas. Referee Dave Gardner has reached the mandatory eight. He looks into Lennox's eyes as he has to look up at the large Englishman and says, are you okay? As he wipes his gloves, Lewis nods yes. Tunney will go for the kill. As we come to a conclusion of round 13, he wings a punch, but only grazes Lennox Lewis, and there is the bell. So the hard luck round was a hard luck round for Lennox Lewis. Emmanuel Stewart in the Lewis corner is asking, are you okay? Do you want to go? He says yes. Re uh, referee Dave Gardner has asked for the ringside physician, Dave Little. Dr. Little asks Lewis, do you want to go? He says yes. Gene Tunney with a huge lead here. He has dropped Lewis for a second time in th round 13. He dropped him for the first time in round 10. Tunney finally is fatigued. Lewis is exhausted. Here's round 14. Lewis needs a miracle knockout. They tie up. Referee Gardner breaks them. They're telling Gene in his corner, just stay away for six minutes and you're the champ. Gene moving and now he stands his ground. Two jabs. And again, he gets the hell out of Dodge. Lewis goes to the belt line. Lewis wants to throw, but Tunney just continues to move and move. Both fighters wing and miss. Now it's Tunney. Right cross, but no left hook. Tunney again is going to punch. Right cross, no left hook. He's walking Lewis into that right cross. He's throwing one shot at a time. He's pot-shotting Lennis. Now he hooks to the body and moves away. It was a left hook. He fainted the right, froze Lewis, and ripped a good left hook under the elbow of Lennox Lewis. Lewis, blood coming from his nose, huffing and puffing, Trying to land something big, but it's Lennox Lewis who takes a big combination at the bell. That time, Tunney put three punches together. Lead right, left to the body, and then up to the head with the hook. Gene Tunney is three minutes away from winning the vacant World Heavyweight Championship here in enemy territory, Wembley Stadium, London, England. Emmanuel Stewart has not minced words in the Lewis corner. He says, you must knock him out. You must knock him out. Lewis with four power. It still is possible, but very difficult. Again, myself and the ringside scorer. Both of our scorecards are unofficial. We have Gene Tunney very comfortably ahead. He's well ahead. If he stands up, if he hears the bell... For round 15 to end the fight, he is the winner. They touch gloves, and here we go. Final three minutes. Tunney moving, moving, moving. Lewis slowly pursuing. Lewis steps forward, and Tunney ratatats him. Two punches and moves away. Hook to the body, and then a right to the head. Again, Tunney stands his ground. Big shots! He windmills that combination, and Lewis is in serious trouble. He staggers back into the ropes. The large Englishman has no legs left. Tunney goes for the kill. A clean left, right, and that is it. That is it. Emmanuel Stewart throws in the towel. Oh, my Lord. Gene Tunney has stopped Lennox Lewis here in the 15th round. When Emmanuel Stewart had seen enough from the Lewis corner, he threw in the towel. Referee Dave Garner then waved off the bout. Lewis was in a world of hurt on the ropes. Gene Tunney, the fighting Marine, takes the vacant World Heavyweight Championship here at Wembley Stadium. He is the winner by TKO, the official time, 104 of the 15th round. It was a windmilling combination that dropped Lewis prior in the prior rounds. 
and then Gene just continued to punch. Lewis was on the ropes being battered. It was the same windmilling combination that dropped him in the 13th. As Gene Tunney opened up, he did not want a decisions victory. He wanted a victory with a triple explanation point, and he got it. He has just stopped Lennox Lewis. That is the first defeat of Lennox Lewis in our Legends of Boxing universe. Unbelievable, and there is much joy and jocularity in the Tunney corner, and a lot of shock and awe by the English fans here at Wembley. A lot of these fans lost money to the bookmakers. The only other people cheering for Gene Tunney were the English bookmakers as all the money was on Lennox Lewis, at least here in England. Lewis was the bigger fighter. Lewis was the more powerful puncher. But Gene Tunney is the fighting Marine. He defeated Jack Dempsey twice in real life and now... In our Legends of Boxing universe, he takes out the favorite, in my opinion, I think he was favored, Lennox Lewis. Let's go to the scorecards, not that it matters. Let's see the official judges now. Oops, that's not where we want to go. Report. Tunney was up on all three scorecards. 136, 129, 138, 127, 136, 130. The closest he was was six points on judge number three. Tunney dropped Lennox Lewis in the 10th, dropped him again with the windmilling combination in the 13th, and then stopped him in the 15th. The same type of windmilling combination when he felt Lewis was wilting. He took him out on the ropes. Manuel Stewart throws in the towel. Referee Dave Gardner agrees with it. Fight is stopped. Here is the official announcement as the ring's ring announcer has the microphone. Your winner at 104 of the 15th round when the corner throws in the towel. And new heavyweight champion Gene Tunney. So the man from Greenwich, Connecticut is now the heavyweight champion of the world. Unbelievable bouts here at Wembley Stadium. Two favorite sons of England go down to defeat. Frank Bruno was knocked out by Primo Canera after dropping Canera in round two. Canera comes back to dominate Bruno, just wearing him down and knocking him out to much joy and jocularity for Mark Jones, who works the Canera corner. And right after the bout, Mark Jones was calling for the rematch with Jerry Cooney at Madison Square Garden. So Canera will travel back to the U.S. in hopes of that rematch with Jerry Cooney. That victory, that knockout victory in the 10th by Primo Canera over Frank Bruno, gave Primo Canera the European heavyweight title. And as we just witnessed, Gene Tunney stopped another favorite son of England, Lennox Lewis, in fact, he dominated Lewis with just beautiful boxing ability, never staying in one place too long. He ratted-tatted Lewis, ratted-tatted Lewis, dropped him in the 10th, I think it was, dropped him again in the 13th, and then stopped him in the 15th. SGJ Jamie says, wow, Primo won that one. Yes, he did. Tremendous right uppercut departing Frank Bruno of his senses. And any claim to the vacant European title, which is now wrapped around the waistline of Primo Canera. Mark Jones says, we want Cooney, we want Cooney. So Mark Jones already clamoring for that Cooney rematch. Gene Tunney is the new heavyweight champion of the world. Fun fight card. If you enjoyed the stream, smack that like button. If you're watching for the first time and you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. If you do subscribe, or if you have subscribed, make sure you hit that bell for notification when we go live. And also check out the other wonderful content creators in our community, such as Cleave Baseball Fan 879 for Card and Dice Baseball, Stratomatic Advanced, and Super Advanced. 
Sox Arizona for all your Red Sox and Celtics needs. He also calls a wonderful game and interacts very well with the live chat. I'd like to th- say thank you to Mark Jones, SGJ Jamie, Cleve Baseball Fan 879, Sox Arizona, Michael Forbes, Jim L., Steeler Fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Thank you very much. Let's take a quick look at the rankings now. You can see Gene Tunney is the world champion in his first fight. He stops Lennox Lewis. Lewis, that's the first defeat for Lennox Lewis, who's now 8-1. Sonny Liston, who who defeated Rocky Marciano by majority decision, is the United States Boxing Association champion. And then Primo Canera, there's Lewis, that's his first loss. Primo Canera is a European champion, but he didn't jump up too much in the ratings, which is kind of strange to me, because he just beat, oh no, he beat Frank Bruno. He did, he did pass Frank Bruno. He took over Bruno's spot. Bruno was 38th in the world. Now Primo Canera is, and he's the European champion. So that's it. Bleacher Bums Game Air. Good friend, Anthony. How you doing, my friend? And, of course, always make sure that you have Glory Days Boxing in your sports gaming stable. Glory Days Boxing. Card and dice makes everything nice. Bleacher Bums Game Air. Good friend, Anthony. Asks, how are you liking this game? I really do enjoy this game. I don't always have the ability to play card and dice. And that means with anything. Whether it's baseball, football, the Fran Tarkening game I have, or boxing. And I'm not lying to you. My favorite card and dice game, period, is Glory Days Boxing. But I can't always play it. If it's late at night, it takes me longer than to do this. It's just because I have to roll the dice, this and that. That being said... I highly recommend Glory Days Boxing. But this game is a lot of fun, Anthony. I enjoy it, and I can't wait until... And someday it's going to happen, folks. Glory Days Boxing, you'll be able to play it on your tabletop, and you'll also be able to play it on your PC. It's just the thing with any PC game, it's a quicker setup. Um... So it's a fun game, Anthony. I, if you want to try it, I suggest, as I tell everyone, try out the demo. Um, it's a good game. I like it. I'm happy I have it in my stable of games. Boxing is my favorite game. Uh, sport, excuse me. So I do a lot of boxing. And what I like is I, I do enjoy this game. It, it gives you a true card and dice feel. You can actually roll your own dice. And that's one recommendation I, 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 I've asked Anthony when, he, when they do Glory Days Boxing on the PC. Allow us to roll our own dice. But when you stream, I think, because I don't roll dice quickly, uh, I, I like to let the computer roll the dice. SGJ Jamie, Glory Days Boxing, the PC version, then all said and done. As Anthony from Bleacher Bums Gaming says, I just sent my fighter data to the programmer I'm talking to today. Hello. Anthony, I think it's going to be a big hit. Uh, I have a few thoughts on that. I will touch base with you. I know I was going to send you an email, but I've been busy. My uncle's not feeling well. Um, this is really like therapy for me. Like I do this, and it relaxes me. So let's quickly take a look at... I'm really enjoying the heavyweights. There's some heavyweights I wish they had in here that they don't. And that's the beauty of Glory Days Boxing. Anthony's very, very good with the community. You ask him about boxers, and if he can make them, he does. The two things I wish this game would do, allow me to make boxers. Not necessarily real boxers, but I would like, you know, I have my Bugs Bunny. Let's just close out of this. I have my Bugs Bunny universe, and I can make Bugs Bunny, but I can't make any other cartoon characters. I have to use... Oh. We can't see him. I have to use these fictional fighter names, and then I say, oh, this is Elmer Fudd. You see what I'm saying? I wish we could we could make our own fighters. That would be fun. And I don't think it's going to detract from the game or not make someone keep buying sets. I just maybe I think it would be a good thing if I could make... How do I get out of this? I think I just close here. Yes, we do. I just think it would be really fun that I can make, say, I know Anthony's making, Joe, uh, um, 
back ski for me, and I greatly appreciate that. A heavyweight contender from the late 40s, early 50s. I look forward to that card and playing it. Um, but yeah, that's the one thing. I wish that you could make your own boxers in this. You can't. You can do it. You can make your own fighter in the career mode, but you can't make any opponents. So, uh, as Anthony says, we will see what happens. I really like replay baseball on the piece. Oh, it's a great game. Replay baseball is outstanding. And it's the same person who worked on this PC game, I do believe. Yeah, Gary, I like this game. I, I'm going to be honest. I would never play this game card and dice. Too many dice rolls for me. But it's beautiful for the PC. And uh, just like I, I I don't play Title Bout 2 tabletop. I play it on the PC because I, I don't like card flipping. I hated card flipping as a kid. I still have my original Title Bout. Let's quickly look at... Um, I might get some middleweight fights up, but I'm really enjoying the heavyweights. I have a light heavyweight tournament offline in a different universe, so it, those bouts don't even count in here. Um, I have all the weight classes they have. What I do like here in the junior welterweight, I have Billy Costello. I always, I was always a big Billy Costello fan. Uh, I might do Billy Costello and Arturo Gotti. I was thinking about Ricky Hatton, Aaron Pryor, but middleweights... I was going to do Hagler and Monzon for the title. They're one and two, but I might go Monzon and Sugar Ray Leonard with Hagler being the number one contender later. A lot of good fun fight options. They don't have many modern fighters. Yeah, try out the demo. You get 16 heavyweights. It's pretty fun. They don't have modern fighters, which Anthony explains it well. A lot of... It's tough to rate a modern fighter. I mean, look at Tiafimo Lopez. We thought he was the next coming of Roberto Duran. And uh, the, the, the kid, Cambosos, or Cambo, uh, how do you pronounce it? The, the Australian fighter r really won a beautiful fight. So, But yeah, there are no active fighters really here in any of these sets that I can see. So there you have it. Let's go back to... Schedule. Primo Canera knocks out Frank Bruno in the 10th after getting dropped in the 2nd to take the vacant European title. And Gene Tunney stops Lennox Lewis at the 104 mark of round 15. He dropped Lewis twice. And then finished him off. He dropped him in the 10th, in the, 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 11th, the 10th or the 11th, and then again in the 13th. And then finished him off in the 15th to take the vacant world title. Anthony from Bleacher Bums Gaming says, I still like uh, Teo, but he needs to ditch his dad. Yeah, I, I, I like him. Um, but I didn't like what he did at the end of that fight. I don't like when people do that. You lose, you lose. And he lost that fight. And I'm a big Lopez fan. He lost that fight. So, um, yeah. I just, I think when you lose, you lose with class. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Even with me, as I, when I played sports competitively. Sometimes I could shake the other team's hand. And sometimes I didn't like those guys at all and I refused. I did do that a couple of times. I just didn't like them. Oh yeah, the, the the oh yeah. Let me show you a couple of things here, and then I'll call it a stream. Let's go back to, and we'll look at Primo, as he's one of my favorite fighters throughout history. Uh, rankings. Yeah, let's do heavyweights. Let's go to Primo. And I like to load up my own pictures. So you, what I like is this. I, I again, this is easy. I try to do this. With Glory Days Boxing, and uh, another boxing game that I really don't show on the channel, um, um, I try to do it on the spreadsheet, but I like to play the game. I don't want to keep the stats. <laughs> you can see he's the Italian heavyweight champion and now the European champion. He's defeated uh, Ross of Italy, Reggetti of Italy, 
Zanon of Italy, Damiani of Italy. He lost a controversial split decision um, to Cooney. And then, as we just witnessed, he knocked out Frank Bruno for the European title. But I like how it tracks everything here. We can go back to any fighter, and you can see who they beat. And if you click on it, you can see the fight, the, the report. Uh, let's close that out. Let's go to Rocky Marciano, who lost a majority decision yesterday to Sonny Liston for the USBA championship. So you click on Rocky. I love that picture. And he knocked out Johansson in six. And Sonny Liston always has given Marciano trouble in any boxing game I've had. So there might be a rematch in the future. But now, I think what I like, now I'm thinking about this. I think Tunney fights Liston. I like that. I like Tunney versus Liston. I like that. I didn't like Johnson versus Tunney. I know... Um, Richard said, was it Richard? I can't remember. Someone who plays a lot of Glory Days boxing said he had a good fight with Tunney and Jack Johnson. I've rolled a lot, a few bouts with Jack Johnson in my 10-star tournament, obviously, in offline and, and also online. I just, he's a, I don't, he he's a very good fighter, obviously, but it doesn't, I don't get excited about Jack Johnson. <laughs> I get excited about Marciano. I get excited about Lewis. I get excited about Ali, Tyson, Foreman. Um, like that. So, But I think Tunney, Liston, I'm going to fight Lewis. I mean, I could go Lewis and Tunney. I might do that. I like that one. And again, I don't build up everyone's records because they're all great fighters. I, I Sometimes I do undercards. You know, like I'll do... Uh, smaller shows but there you have it i like riddick bow we got we gotta get riddick bow in there i might do a card from louisville so you see ali page uh jimmy ellis we might do a three fight card and i'll pick some decent opponents for them all right So there you have it. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank our good friend Anthony from Bleacher Bums Gaming. Please check out Glory Days Boxing. Great bang for your buck. Tremendous. Every major weight class plus some junior class fighters. Updates to some fighters. You get so many great fighters and it's so much fun. And I look forward to the PC game when it comes eventually. Because uh, it's just, I'm going to add it. I just love it. So thank you to Anthony from Bleacher Bums Gaming. Uh, Glory Days Boxing Sideline Strategies uh, dot com where you can get payoff pitch also. Thank you to SGJ Jamie. Thank you to Mark Jones who was in the Canera Corner. Cleve Baseball Fan 879. Sox Arizona. Michael Forbes. Jim L. Sealer Fan 1933 aka Matt. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Health and happiness. Stay safe. Be smart. Treat people that you want to be treated. God bless. You know what's coming, folks. Primo Canera is the new European champion, and Gene Tunney is the new world heavyweight champion. God bless. I love you all. And